Welcome guys, I'm Giyu here, hope you're having a great day and uh, in this video we discuss uh, differences between promises and observables this is the last video in a series and uh, right now we are going to solve a very similar problem that we solved in second video but we're going to do this with observables and uh, then we will compare these two solutions and uh, make some conclusions we have this API service and I've added two methods here, get categories and get games. They return observables, both of them. The get games receives the category ID and then returns the list of games as observable. And we have this observable page component that is currently displayed uh, in our browser. And uh, now first thing we want to accomplish is to get uh, list of categories displayed so uh, let's code this okay let's check the result first here we have this is a list of categories we have strategy games and rpg now let's check the code it's actually very simple, very, very simple. Uh, we define cat's property on our component, it's observable. And then we assign cat's the result of get categories call, which is the list of categories. And this is observable. Now in our template here, we uh, iterate over the categories. We are using the async pipe, which is very important. It will wait for this observable and once it yields new result then this a loop will execute and in the end we receive the list of uh, games here now let's um, let's extend our solution and when user clicks on the category we display the list of games under the given category Okay, let's check the result first. Uh, refresh the page, we have uh, categories, click the one of them, we get the list, click another, we get another list, and uh, this is working as expected. Now let's look at the code. Uh, in uh, our code, we have added two new things. First is selected cat ID, it is behavior subject, and it's observable as well and initially we are passing null because when the page loads when this component gets created uh, there is no category selected so it's null uh, then we have the games this is observable that is uh, dependent on selected category id now we have some chaining and some pipe going on here first of all we only want to respond to category ids when they are set you know, if it is null or undefined, we don't want to respond to that because our API might fail and um, it might have some unwanted consequences. So we are using the filter operator from RxJS library. And uh, in the next step, we are already sure that category ID is not null uh, and uh, we are passing it to uh, get games method on our API and get games returns the observable and again here we are using a switch map instead of a regular map when we return a result as observable from this call instead of regular map we need to use a, a switch map in this case so whatever the result this get games will return will be returned 
it, through this observable as well through games as well so in the template we have another simple for loop here over the games uh, we are using async pipe again and we are just displaying this game also we have a check here uh, we we are displaying this unordered uh, list uh, in case where category is selected so initially when there is nothing here when it is null uh, it won't be on the page so we display this only when the user clicks on one of the categories and uh, that way we have um, achieved this result we can uh, get this displayed and uh, yeah that's that's pretty simple now let's add more functionality to it like we did in our previous video and let's add some search Okay, our solution is done, it's completed. Now let's uh, check the result first. Well, let's refresh the page, uh, select some category here. Let's type in something, uh, Witcher, Assassin's Creed. It's working really well. Yeah, this is the desired result that we wanted. Also, we have this, uh, this is working really well. If, I, if I'm if i here in this category and I, I type in, let's say, Witcher, it's not here, but when I click this, we get a new list of games based on this category, and also we get this filter applied. Now, let's look at this code and uh, analyze what we've uh, done. So here I'm using uh, reactive forms and I have imported reactive forms module from angular forms so I can then use them in my components and I have a simple form usually it's a good idea to have some filter form uh, on a page when you have uh, some filtering and searching and sorting and all of that so you can capture the user inputs here. In this case, we only have a search, it's a form control. Initially, it's an empty form control. Now, on the template side, we have this div here. It is connected with form group directive to our form. And then uh, we are connecting our text field, our text input uh, to our uh, search field, search form control. And that way, this form is already connected to our template and uh, we get the benefits of our reactive form. Now we have this and it, it, it's already good. Also we have created two new observables. First one is just the games and uh, this is the games where we have previously assigned to our games here, games property on our component, but now we have this separate. We are, you know, it's, it's just the same. We uh, look for our category ID and then we filter this and return the games under the given category. So games is the observable that contains the list of games under selected category. So this is a one thing. Another thing is our current search uh, string, search term that user has typed in. So what we do here, we are uh, benefiting from our reactive form we get the search form control and search has value changes. And uh, initially it's not gonna emit anything. So we are using a start with operator from RxJS and we are just uh, using a starting value for our search field. And now we have the second thing. So there are two things here. First, 
the games that are under selected category that user has selected and the second is search string that user has typed in now our result our result that is uh, displayed here is a combination of these two things you know the games and search string so how do we combine them well it's the operator combine latest uh, which is going to take the latest value that observable emitted from games and the latest value that observable emitted from search so it's going to take these two and uh, return a new observable now we are using pipe here and the map operator at this point in our chain of observables we have games and we have a search string now all we have to do is to go over the games and uh, just keep the ones that match our search criteria even though this search is not super complicated it's good for this example now this filter here is not this don't mistake it with that it's just a regular array filter method that we uh, use with arrays and uh, this result will be new observable and here we are assigning it to our games and then games are uh, displayed on our page and you know no matter what changes we always reflect the latest version that we have of games that's why when we refresh the page select some um, category and let's type in search let's type in witcher and it's not here but when i click rpg it gets displayed so it takes into consideration the latest list of games and the latest uh, search here and then we have this and that's why we have this such a reactive user interaction now let's compare these two solutions together and uh, make some conclusions so here we have it um, this is our observable solution on the left and on the right we have our promise based solution and uh, you know just just look at this which one is easier to read and uh, which one gives you the idea of how things work for me personally the left side of things here is much much cleaner and much more reactive more manageable easier to read and if other angular developer comes in who is also experienced with promises or observables in this case you know she will just understand what's going on here so in this case there is a lot of dependency between the class property between the component properties and these methods and when you look at this first glance it's not really easy to understand what's going on here well in this case it's like a beautiful picture that we have you know you look at this and on a high level you understand okay you know we have categories we have games have the search and we are combining this two into some manner and then you can go into the details and it's much much easier to read now if you're not familiar with observables and you haven't used them a lot this this thing here on the left side might be a little bit confusing but once you get used to it, then it's much, much easier to uh, use and um, write the code in this way. One key char characteristic of observables is that it always assumes the change. When we have observable, it is assumed that at some point it might change. And the way we build our components around observables is that we always consider the change. That's why we have achieve this result so smoothly we have games and we have search they are two completely different observables but in the end we combine them and achieve these reactive user interactions well in this case it's not really a natural you know we have this selected cat games selected category they are independent but uh, we have to set up some methods here uh, to listen to its changes to listen to its events and uh, then we have some um, fetch and filter method that is called on this uh, the two times and uh, 
Now, if we wanted to add more filters to it, it would get much more complex. Well, in this case, we will just add the new uh, field in our form and then potentially another observable and combine them in a very straightforward way. So uh, this is it. My personal preference is that I always, almost all the time use observables unless I do like very, very simple things. And even in that case, at this point, I prefer to use observables. They are much, much more readable, easier to understand. And when you're working on a large project and you know, you're know working it through months or years, you want to make your code as clean and as readable as possible because you have to work with it in the future. And uh, I've tried this both ways and uh, I've tried the promises and I've tried observables and from my experience in the long run, uh, the observables yield much more, you know, much, much better results in terms of code readability and uh, uh, ability to maintain your code. So when I first got introduced to this idea of observables, uh, I didn't like it. It was not natural to me, but I, I stick to it and uh, yeah, I've seen the results. So uh, this is it. This is the last video in a series. Um, I hope that uh, it gives you, you know, a good idea and comparison between observables and promises, not only some high level theory thing, but on a practical level, even though this is a simple example, the benefits are already apparent. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please click the like button, subscribe and uh, share it with your friends.